In hypothesis testing, after stating the null and alternative hypotheses and choosing a level of significance, next you would obtain a random sample from the population and calculate a sample statistic, which is called a test statistic, such as the mean, x bar, the variance, s squared, or the proportion, p hat, in relation to the parameter in the null hypothesis, such as mu, sigma squared, or p. The sample statistic, or test statistic, is then converted to a standardized test statistic, such as z, t, or chi-square, and the standardized test statistic is then used to make a decision about the null hypothesis. In determining if we should reject the null hypothesis, one of the methods is to look at the probability of getting a standardized test statistic that is less than the level of significance, and this is where a p-value comes in. A p-value, or probability value, of a hypothesis test is the probability of getting a test statistic, such as x-bar, s-squared, or p-hat, from a sample that's value is as extreme or more extreme than the one determined from the sample data you are using. Let's look at a visual of this. So let's say this box represents a population and you pull a random sample from this population. And from your sample, you can calculate the mean or the variance or a proportion. In this box or population, there are an infinitesimal number of random samples that can be pulled. The p-value is the probability of getting a sample from this population that has an extreme or more extreme value than the one you got from your sample. And this value can be the mean, the variance, or a proportion. The p-value depends on the test, and there are three hypothesis tests. A left-tailed test, a right-tailed test, and a two-tailed test. For a left-tailed test, H sub A, the alternative hypothesis, contains the less than inequality. So we could have for H sub zero, mu greater than or equal to K, where K represents a claim value, and H sub A would be mu less than K. On the graph, this looks like this, where the red line represents the standardized test statistic, and the area to the left of the line is the p-value. A right-tailed test is basically the opposite of a left-tailed test, where the alternative hypothesis contains the greater than inequality. For instance, for h sub zero, mu is less than or equal to k, and h sub a is mu is greater than k. The graph looks like this. Again, the red line represents a standardized test statistic, and the area to the right of the line is the p-value. And for a two-tailed test, the alternative hypothesis contains the does not equal sign. For instance, for h sub zero, mu is equal to k. And for h sub a, mu does not equal k. The graph looks like this. The red lines represent the standardized test statistics, and the area outside of the lines is the p-value. In this case, each of these areas outside of the lines would be equal to one half of the p-value. It's important to remember, if the alternative hypothesis has the less than inequality, it's a left-tailed test. If it has the greater than inequality, it's a right-tailed test. And if it has the does not equal sign, it's a two-tailed test. And you can also look at the inequalities as arrowheads, pointing to the direction of the test needed. Sometimes it can be confusing to know which type of test, left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed, to perform. So let's go through some examples about deciding which test to perform. For each of these, we're going to write out a claim mathematically, then write out the null and alternative hypotheses, then determine the appropriate test to use. Example 1. A recent report stated that less than 29% of people exercise twice a week. So the claim is that the population proportion, P, is less than 0.29. We know that the alternative hypothesis contains the inequality, so H sub A is P less than 0.29. And the complement of that is p greater than or equal to 0.29, and that's our null hypothesis, with the equality in the statement. Since we have the less than inequality in the alternative hypothesis, this will require a left-tailed test. One more example. Let's say that a research firm released data that stated that people check their phones more than 14 times an hour. So the claim is that mu, the population mean, is greater than 14. We know that the alternative hypothesis contains the inequality, so h sub a is mu greater than 14, and the complement of that is mu less than or equal to 14, and that is our null hypothesis, with the equality in the statement. Since we have the greater than inequality in the alternative hypothesis, this will require a right-tailed test. Now for the decision rule based on the p-value. In hypothesis tests, we choose a level of significance, which is the probability of making a type 1 error. That is, rejecting the null hypothesis when it's actually true. The level of significance is usually noted as the symbol alpha. And the three commonly used levels of significance are alpha equals 0.10, alpha equals 0.05, and alpha equals 0.01.
Earlier in the video, we saw that the p-value is an area under a curve. So what we're going to do is basically compare the p-value under a curve to an alpha value. And the rule is, if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, then reject h sub 0. Reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than alpha, then fail to reject the null hypothesis. We're going to go through some examples without doing any calculations, again, just so you understand the concept. Going back to our earlier example that less than 29% of people exercise twice a week. We saw that our null hypothesis is P, the population proportion, is greater than or equal to 0.29. And the alternative hypothesis is P less than 0.29. And this requires a left-tailed test. So we would go out and gather a random sample. And from that sample, we would calculate a value for P hat. And that would be our test statistic for P. We would then convert that test statistic to a Z value a standardized test statistic, which we'll cover how to do in a future video. Then we would look that Z value up in a Z distribution table. And that table will tell us the area under the curve, which is the P value. So let's say that in this example, we found the area under the curve in the left tail to be 0.07. If our alpha value was 10%, 0.10, in comparing these, our P value of 0.07 is less than the alpha value of 0.10. And based on the decision rule, when the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we then reject the null hypothesis. In this same example, if the level of significance, alpha, was 0.01 or 0.05, then we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Because in both of those cases, the p-value of 0.07 is greater than the alpha value. All right, my friends, that be the basics on the left, the right, and the two-tailed tests for hypothesis testing. I will link other hypothesis testing videos down in the description box below. Hopefully this video helped you out. I do have sh sh more videos right there for you. Till next time, I am out of here.